this is Joseph Drust, and welcome to another video on Z Classroom. In this tutorial, we'll cover a technique using the Z Modeler Brush, Nano Mesh, and Surface Noise functions inside of ZBrush to create some building assets. Here I just have some quick examples of some buildings that were created using this technique. The models here were all generated inside of ZBrush, then sent to Keyshot to render using the ZBrush to Keyshot bridge. In this tutorial, we'll cover creating a single building inside of ZBrush, and then send the model to Keyshot to generate our final render. So to start off, we're first going to generate the actual building's footprint using a plain 3D object. So here I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I'm first going to come over to the tool palette over here. I'm just going to click on any one of these icons to open up the Quick Pick menu, and I'm going to select the plain 3D object. Now with the plain 3D object selected, I'm returning my canvas, and simply click and drag and draw that plain 3D object out on my screen. Now once this is drawn out like so, I'm going to come over here to the actual edit button or press T on my keyboard and now I'm in edit mode and I can now manipulate this object in 3D. Now the next thing I want to do is I need to change some of the settings on the actual plain 3D here. So I'm going to come over here and first turn on the actual floor grid and then I'm also going to turn on polyframes. Now if I zoom out and rotate around the model here, you're going to notice that the plane 3D object is facing the front camera here and I actually need to align it onto the ground plane. The plane 3D object by default also has a lot of topology in it, so I need to reduce that as well. So to do both of these, I'm going to come back to the tool menu here and I'm going to open up the actual initialize tab down here. And I'm first going to change the alignment to Y which will now align that to the actual ground plane there. Next, I need to actually decrease the actual topology on the plane 3D object as well. So I'm going to return back to the initialize panel over here, and I'm going to adjust the H divide slider and the V divide slider. So I'm just going to type in five for both of those. And now I have a 16 polygon plane 3D object on my screen here. So now that that is done, I need to actually turn this into a PolyMesh 3D object, which will allow me to actually apply the nano meshes to the surface geometry. So I'm going to come over here to the tool palette and just click Make PolyMesh 3D. And then now that I'm done with the floor grid here, I'm just going to turn that off as well. So now I can start manipulating the mesh here to create an interesting footprint for the building. So to do this quickly, I'm just going to use the Control plus Shift Selection brush. So if you hold down Control and Shift on your keyboard, you'll end up getting the Select Rectangle Brush. And I'm just going to drag that out like so. And then after I engulf a bit of the actual geometry here, I'm going to hold down Alt to turn the selection option into red. And then I'm going to Release, and it's going to hide that part of the mesh. Now after this part is hidden, now I have this kind of like L-shaped kind of structure here. I'm going to go over to the actual geometry panel here. I'm going to open up Modify Topology, and I'm going to delete that hidden geometry. So now I'm just left with this geometry on my actual mesh. So now with the geometry like so, we can actually come through now and apply a nano mesh across the entire surface to start generating the actual height for the actual building. So first I need to select the Z Modeler brush. So I can come over here to the brush menu over here and then locate the Z Modeler brush. Or I can hit B on my keyboard. I can then hit Z to isolate the brushes that start with the letter Z. And then I can press M to select the Z Modeler brush. Now with the Z Modeler brush, if I hover over a polygon on my actual model here and press spacebar, it'll open up the Z Modeler poly menu. Now here at the top, I want to locate the insert nano mesh action. And with this action selected, I want to change my target to all polygons. Now with the insert nano mesh action selected and the target being set to all polygons, if I come across any polys on my model here and simply click and drag, a nano mesh will be applied to all polygons across the model. So as you can see here, I've now applied a cube primitive to every single poly on the actual model there. Now after these polys are applied, if I come back over here and locate the actual nano mesh tab, you'll notice that now the nano mesh portion is now active and I have a bunch of sliders over here that I can manipulate to change how that actual nano mesh is being affected across the surface geometry. So if I come over here and change the actual width slider, you'll notice that the nano mesh width is now being adjusted. I can change the length, and I can change the height like so. So as you can see, as I'm changing the actual height dimension here, you're getting kind of that tall building kind of look. Now, in addition to just changing these all uniformly, you also have the option to add variation. So if I come over here and change the actual HVAR slider here for the height variation, you'll notice now that I'm getting different heights across that actual nano mesh. And this is going to generate more of that kind of building-like structure. 
So now with this, I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to adjust the size here to kind of weld those guys a little bit together. So I'm getting something like this. So we're looking a little more like an actual building here. And just the height some more, maybe change the width and the length. And then maybe apply some variation to those guys as well. So just coming through and variating those guys up and just changing the sliders, manipulating these until you get kind of a shape you're kind of looking for. Now with this right now, it's being very evenly distributed across that actual footprint that we just created. So I can actually come down to the bottom here and apply some random distribution as well. So just come down here and start manipulating this area here. And now you can see I'm getting even more kind of random variation to those actual shapes. So this is going to allow me to experiment with multiple building designs quickly and easily. So I'm going to continue just manipulating these sliders a little bit until I find something I like. I'm going to come over here and also change the seed element here. And this is going to apply a random seed to the actual random distribution, which even gives you more control over some of the designs you can actually come up with. So I'm just going to scroll through this here until I find something I like. So that's kind of interesting there. And just some of the height values here, maybe some of the length. Just add a little more of a variation uh, to the design there. So maybe something like that. So now that that is done, I want to actually come through and I want to apply a second nano mesh to the existing poly group here to create a lobby type structure. So now if I hover over a poly and simply click and drag, by default the insert nano mesh across all polygons here is going to apply a new nano mesh to those actual polygons and you'll notice that it has actually replaced the building part that I already had established. So in order to add another nano mesh index to an existing polygroup, when you're actually dragging it out like so, you just need to hold down shift. Now when you hold down shift, this will apply a nano mesh and keep the actual existing nano mesh and just apply a new one to the actual area. So now you can see I have a new nano mesh index created across all those polygons on the actual model. Now if I return to the nano mesh tab over here, you'll see I now have a index slider that is available and this will allow me to switch between those two nano meshes that were applied to the actual model. Now I can isolate each one of these indexes as well. So if I come up here and just click on hide others and this will just show you the actual nano mesh you have selected. So if I just select the index one here, which is the lobby nano meshes, I'm gonna come through and now manipulate these guys on their own kind of settings here to kind of create that lobby. Maybe put some random distribution on that. And let's throw some rotational values in here too. I'm gonna turn off hide others so I can see it being affected against the other nano mesh as well. I'm come through and just kind of adjust these sliders here until I kind of generate an interesting kind of lobby shape on the actual model here. So just coming through and playing with these and just adjusting the different variations here until I get something that's kind of appealing to an actual building structure here. And just the random seed as well. So that's looking a little bit interesting. Maybe adjust the width, maybe some of the length. Let's just rotation some. So there we go, maybe something like that. Let's just the width a little bit here. So now I have a pretty good start here for a building design. And I can further come in now and start manipulating this with the Z Modeler brush. Thank you. 